Hi and welcome to my channel. So just when you think you've heard enough about the UK government and visa rules and all of these, there is massive trouble right now because the UK government's tax and spending watchdog, which is the OBR and officially the Office for Budget Responsibility has come out with staggering data and analysis of so-called low economic migrants. Look, in today's video, I'm going to be telling you what the statistics say and what they are recommending regarding, obviously, immigration and all of that. But most importantly, what you need to do if you're a migrant in the UK or if you're still out of the UK planning to come to this country, it is so crucial that you hear me out. So if you haven't joined this family, hit the subscribe button below because you want to be the first person that is notified every single day when I drop a video on here. Look, let me tell you something. When I check some of these data, and by the way, what this OBR has said is that low economic migrants are costing the UK government about £150,000 each. I'm going to explain what this is all about, which, by the way, I'm somebody that I'm very passionate about career progression in the UK is for these reasons, such as what I'm going to be talking about in today's video, that I always say I am very unapologetic about wanting the best in the UK and only going for the top opportunities so that I can earn a lot of money, work less and retire early. Look, because when you're going to look at the data and you see what is on ground, what the immigrants are going through in the UK, doing jobs, you know, that people are not willing to do, you know, taking on jobs that the country needs. I, as a nurse, I can tell you that, you know, working for the NHS over the years, we've had people that have stayed in the hospital for months because they don't have carers. So when I read an article from such a body saying low economic migrants are costing the UK government 150000 I feel like, if anything, you know, these people should be paid a lot more than what is being offered but anyway if you need to contact me about your personal circumstances about career progression in the uk visa sponsorship jobs you know you're looking for the best opportunities and all of that if you check the comment section below you're going to see my contact details there's my whatsapp number as well as my email address and you can contact me at your earliest convenience i also have a free newsletter where i send information about all these different things directly to your inbox so that you're not reliant on the youtube algorithm because when i moved to the uk 13 years ago you know as a carer i said to myself i need to get to the top of my career so that i can progress to the top now i work as an advanced nurse practitioner which is a senior clinical nursing job and that's why i'm telling you that Career progression for us as immigrants is even more crucial. Some people feel that as an overseas worker in the UK or in any country, you know, we if we're not doing very well, then it's kind of okay because we have moved. For me, it wouldn't be worthwhile being in this country if I wasn't progressing, if I wasn't feeling that, you know, it is worthwhile leaving my home, leaving the comfort of my country and all of that to come to this country. And that's why when I read this article, this is more of a rant. I was just like, who are these people that have done this research? Where do they get this data from? Because it is ridiculous. In fact, one of the most ridiculous things they said as well is that if you are British born, you're going to boost the economy by £280,000 by the mere fact that you're born British. And I was like, yeah, but how does that work? You know, how, by the way, I would like to leave a comment in the comment section below. I mean, where are you watching this video from? Are you already in the UK? What do you think about everything that is going on in the UK at the moment regarding immigration? For example, do you think that the UK needs more migrants? Do you think the UK needs fewer migrants than there are currently? What do you say? Because I mean, everybody's got to say, you know, to what the situation is because the whole point especially with the previous government they've been working tooth and nail to reduce the number of well net migration long story short which means they want more people leaving the uk you know than the number obviously coming in that's the whole point because that's the best way for you to reduce net migration you either reduce the number of people coming in in the first place or if more people come in you need even more to go out so that net migration is lower but as we know that isn't really happening because at the end of the day the uk is desperate for workers every day they're putting vacancies hey we need more workers but at the same time i feel that there are these government bodies that don't probably have awareness of the real situation on the ground for example 
you know, when you go to the hospital, you're working, you go to a care home and you don't have staff. And these companies are reliant on overseas workers. In fact, in the last few months, many care homes in the UK have closed saying that they have closed because they haven't got enough staff. And with the visa changes and fewer people applying to work for private companies, because most people now would rather work for the NHS so that they can bring their dependents, many of these private companies have struggled massively because they cannot find people in the UK. But the most staggering thing about this UK government report, obviously, is that they are saying that migrants, you know, if a migrant, for, if somebody moves to the UK at the age of 25, they are going to already cost the government, you know what I mean, £150,000 by the age of 66. If you live up to 80 years old, you're going to cost the government £500,000. If you live to 100 years old, you're going to cost the government £1 million in deficit. That's what they're saying. Which means that those of us that are coming to the UK, they're just thinking like, oh my God, no, we're low economic migrants. And they want migrants that they consider lucrative so those people that are going to come to the country they're going to become entrepreneurs they're going to make things that will bring in more money they're recommending that they bring more of those people you know that they bring more of those people and reduce the people that they consider as a burden despite the fact that you know they have also acknowledged in the same report that these low income or low earning migrants take very little in terms of benefits. They don't take any benefits because they're not even entitled in the five years. But most importantly, what they've said is these low economic migrants actually pay more tax. So what I'm asking is if somebody's paying more tax, how come they're actually then costing the government more? But anyway, this is the data that they have released and they have recommended, obviously, more of those people, you know, that they feel that are going to come to the UK and kind of make more money because that's who they want, you know. And I can see that perspective because I'm also for the fact that if you come to the UK on these low paying jobs, you cannot stay stuck in those jobs because we have put in too much effort to get to this country. It's not worth staying in that situation forever. You know, when you get here, you need to do everything that you can to be able to progress. Because when you're reading a news article, like I've been going through this and seeing all these things, I'm just like, oh my goodness, really? These are people that are needed in this country. You need carers to support people in their own homes. You need carers for elderly people to be able to stay in their houses. You need carers for care homes to remain open. So when you see data like this, it's just like, this is complete lack of insight. And if anything, they should be thinking about a pay rise, how to pay, you know, these workers more, how to be able to enhance the quality, which, I mean, they're thinking about that. But I just feel like, you know, when you look at visa fees as well, the visa fees are ridiculous. This report also said the average visa fees that each person will pay is about 12500 I say it's a lot more. It is a lot more because when you look at indefinite leave to remain, you look at all the extensions, you look at this, that, it's a lot of fees. But anyway, what I've learned from this is career progression is the only way. That's what, that's my whole point in this video. Because if you don't progress and 20 years in the UK, 30 years, you're still in the same position. I tell you, you're going to look back and say, Melvis, I wish I'd listened to you. You know, you don't want to be watching this video 20 years from now, sitting and thinking, oh my God, Melvis, you were right. You know, you saw this coming. How come I didn't do anything? No, it's not worth it. Because when you read a newspaper article, when you're 99 years old, say that you're costing the government 1 million, you know, you've contributed nothing to the economy, you're going to feel so touched. But anyway, drop your comments in the comment section below. I'll see you in this video right here. Enough with my rants now. Thank you. <laughs>